Morning. So the sun's just getting up. It's going to be sunny with cloud today, so sunny periods. Hopefully more cloudy than sunny. I've decided on this swim today um, for a change, more than anything else. The usual swim that I fish next door. It's a bit overgrown now and shallow and you really need the boat in there to land fish. Use it as a platform. The boat's up the other end of the lake. So it was go and get the boat, which I don't really want to go out on the boat, you know. So I thought about this swim. I haven't fished it for a while. It's literally 50 yards down. So I thought, yeah, go on, give it a try. Watch out. Well, Mr. Sunshine is disappearing. Happy days. <laughs> oh, so I need to come down here and do a little bit of work on swim to. It's a really cut up. Um, preferably when I'm not fishing, so that's okay. Um, I might pop down either over the weekend or maybe Monday. I don't know what the weather's going to be like next week. I haven't looked yet uh, to choose the days that I'm going to be coming down on. But um, I'll sort something out because I want to get back in swim too uh, over the next few weeks. But I'm happy to fish here today because, like I say, I haven't fished here for a while. You don't know what you don't know. I think it's always good to kind of move around. Now, the wind at the moment is pushing down that end of the lake. It's supposed to be a southwesterly moving to. Uh, west southwesterly, so it's supposed to be coming from over my left shoulder here this way, um, but it's actually going that way. So it's a southeasterly that's flying at the moment. There you go. The wind here tends to blow as it wishes. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so I thought I'd do a lot better on Tuesday, um, but. Even though it was a good day, you know, it was overcast and it rained for much of the day and the evening, it was raining when I left. Conditions were good, you know, but I wasn't really seeing many fish roll, if hardly any in the evening at all, you know. There was really not much activity on the lake and not a great deal in the morning either. So. I think they're getting stuck into the blood worm on here at the moment, that's for sure, because I've been seeing them making trails, especially real close in the margins, and if you walk around this lake, you can see grey patches in the margins where all the weeds have been cleared. Um, and some of them, some of the patches are not grey, they're almost like a beige yellow colour, is what the carp have done, they've fed on it so often, it's just the sand that's sort of being left, everything, the sediment and everything else, the clay, that's all been washed out by a constant feeding on it. So, uh, yeah, I'll be popping down there uh, later on this morning. Uh, I'll whip the rods out and I just want to have a quick walk along the bank and see if they're feeding on any of these little spots that I've spotted down this. So, and they're all close in on the swims, literally up to a few inches deep. Um, and the bigger carp can't get to those bits, but the smaller carp is what's, you know, cleaning it, so. And there's fish of all sizes feeding on these spots as well. It's definitely blood worm that they're after. So, yeah. And I, this is why they've been doing a lot of breaching just lately. I've noticed that. The breaching, where they just shoot out the water and crash. And cleaning off the sediment from feeding on the blood worm, because they get covered in it. And uh, I don't think they find that very comfortable. And, and so they just come straight out of the water to clean them. So like breaching fish is a sign of feeding carp, but more than anything else, I think it's a sign of really preoccupied carp, and they can be really difficult to catch. They seem to ignore everything other than what they're completely focused on, which is the blood worm. I tried for them the other day, I was fishing right amongst them. And they were sending up huge plumes all around my hook bay and everything. I never got a touch. And so, <laughs> yeah, that was disappointing. I thought I was well in, I really did, but 
I've, I've, I've seen it before. I've, I've been there before on other fisheries where I've been fishing for these fish and they're feeding like crazy on all the naturals, you know. And you just don't get a bite. You know? But if you put some of your bait in and you get them on that, then you can catch them with things. But if they're preoccupied on bloodworm, whatever, it's difficult. And this has been sort of written about since the 50s, and probably earlier, I'm, I'm sure. They do get very single-minded on it, you know. But they're still quite alert. You can't make any noise, but you can never do that. But you have to be ultra careful when you're getting close into them, right? like I was the other day. You know, they're easily spooked, and once they're gone, they won't come back. Hopefully we will get a fish today. It would be nice. Uh, it was good to get a bite the other day, but it wasn't a particularly good looking fish. Right. Well, hopefully the wind will actually blow the, the way it's supposed to, this way. And the sun will stay in and the fish will feed. We can only but hope, can't we? Well, the wind still seems to be pushing more down that end than it is up here, which is contrary to the weather forecast. Damn it. Um, sometimes location isn't just about finding the carp, it's about finding somewhere where you think they're going to get, or where you think they spend a lot of time, that sort of thing, you know. Um, there's been a few fish roll here and there. I think the carp spend more time around here than they do up there just from sightings really, but um, I'm sure there are some carp around here. Uh, there's plenty of bait out, not too much for them, so I'm happy with how I'm fishing. But, um, it's now what, nearly nine o'clock? Yeah, almost nine o'clock. I would have hoped to have had a fish by now, because often if you're on for a good day, you, you get a fish fairly, fairly soon after you, you know, started. So. So, could be scratching again. Yeah. Well, the wind is swinging. Um, it's now coming much more from the north than it is uh, from anything else. It's supposed to be coming from the south. So, kind of work, but the cloud cover is excellent. It's low, it's full. Um, so, I'm happy with that. So, we've got the day. So, it doesn't turn out to be so good this morning and hopefully this afternoon, this evening, we'll be better. We're here for the whole day, like I say. And it's the best time to fish for them, if you ask me. I'm basically just going to sit and wait. There's not much else I can do. I'll probably have a recast in an hour or so. Um, this is because of the silkweed. There's not a lot of wind on the lake, not a lot of movement. I don't think the silkweed will be moving around so much, but even so, it doesn't hurt. Just to recast it every now and again, to make sure it's sitting right. So, you can't stop the relentless march of time and autumn is almost upon us. The leaves are starting to turn. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get those lovely overcast, windy autumn days and we'll back up. I think the only trouble with autumn is it's just not long enough, you know. I could do it going on for a good few more months than it does. Look time. <sighs> We've got a nice one too. One of those short, fat, grey ones. It's a lovely fish though. Right. Relax. There you go. Look at that one. Things up. There you 
you go. Uh, 25 pounds, one ounce. Happy days. Right hand rod. That makes a change. Ooh. I think I've seen this fish in the water. It's very noticeable when I saw it surface just out there. I thought I recognise that fish. Oh, that camera. This is a bit too high. There you go, that's better. Whew. I'm an old man, it's a heavy fish. Not as heavy as some I know, but. There you go. Happy days. Let's hope we can get another one, eh? Right, I'll take a few pictures and slip it back. I'm getting warm. Blue sky, sun's out, so that actually might be end of the morning session, but look, the wind has finally succumbed and it's blowing down here like it should be. Uh, hopefully that will make that little bit of difference and get me another one. I'm going to take this off. Oh, hot work. Oh. Now that's the kind of stamped fish that I'm really looking for here. The mid upper twenties, thirties. I'm pretty sure there's a couple of forties in there or one in there. Yeah. And if they're not forty now they probably will be in the winter. Oh yeah, for sure. So that wind is blowing nicely now, the reeds on the other side are getting pushed right over. Yeah, it took a little while for it to turn but I think, to be honest with you, that wind turning might have actually um, helped because there's a lot of cloud over there and hopefully that's going to move over. The low cloud seems to have disappeared around me. There's plenty of cloud everywhere else. None above me. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, I'm well happy with that fish. Really lovely fish. I like those, those sort of grey ones and the short, fat, dumpy. Yeah, yeah. Nice looking fish, so I'll have a quick look at the pictures and I'll see how they came out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pleased with that fish. Right, well, the wind's coming down nicely, the sun's out. Hopefully, some cloud will come over and um, spoil its day and improve ours. Well, there is some cloud about, and it is doing its best. Uh, I missed the sunshine, but right at the moment, I'm well happy. That fish absolutely tore off. There was no initial bleeps, it just went beep straight to the top, and bite, bait right, the free spool, I should say. Um, just spun. <laughs> it takes six clicks past the, the vertical. Uh, for full clutch. I have mine set at three here and they're taking line real easy. Mind you, it's making sure they're hooked too. Does the job, finishes the job they started as I like to say. Um, but I picked up the rod, the rod just went. Um, I released the clutch just a little bit, let it run a little bit. Put on some side strain, get it to kite rather than going straight out, which it did straight away. Tighten the clutch and then went over to there over to the boat I put on right hand side strain it was going right I put on right hand side strain to stop it from going in all those reeds over there there's not a lot of room in here but I managed to back up and get it this side of the reeds wound down to it at the boat got into the boat it's nice and stable it's not moving about at all because it's so shallow it's sitting on the bottom got into the boat no problem it went straight in Got a bit angry when it was in the net. That's a lovely fish. 
I do like those dumpy ones, I really do. I've not caught too many of them actually over my lifetime, fishing. I can remember a few, I can remember the very first one. They remind me of the old style Italian strain of carp, which always seem to be short and fat. And I noticed also back in the 2007-8 and Lake I was fishing, uh, Manicure Lake, aka Glade Water. Um, that had a lot of German fish in it, which were very similar as well, um, but much darker colours. Um, the Italian ones seemed, when I was younger, they, were, they seemed to be the grey, shorter, fatter, dumpier fish, and they always seemed to be the biggest ones in the lake. I remember the lake over at uh, Barway, which is out the fence. This is back in the very early 80s, was being fished by a British Carp Study Group member called Paul Ellsgood, who I met a few times because uh, I was fishing the water that he knew and he used to pop me in. And, uh, yeah, um, and he wrote an article in the CAA mag about catching fish from this lake. He didn't name it really, but I knew which water it was. Uh, I'd fished it myself. Um, and yeah, the fish he was catching from there as well were very much like that. And the biggest carp in that lake, they were all these big, grey, dumpy uh, mirrors, which I always referred to as Italians. They may have made up them. So, it was nice to catch it. That's, that's why. It's not caught too many of them, so it's nice. I like the big, plaguey, colourful ones. They're lovely. But they remind me of the old days, those fish. Yeah. I mean, when they first started importing carp, you see, a lot of those ones were coming in. And there's not so many of them around now. That one, like a lot of those fish, had a little lump on its right hand flank. Uh, whether it's a broken rib or whatever, I don't know. We used to have a carp in the wolf hat called Lumpy. It was the biggest in the lake. Again, one of these Italian type mirrors. And it had a lump in the side. You know what? It's not such a bad day. It's late season. The sunshine still plays its part, but not so much. So, what I'm looking for now is the water temperatures to start dropping. Um, I've actually got to have a word with Jason. Hello, Jason, if you're watching. <laughs> I need a winter bait, a good one. And, um, He's the man I think I'm going to speak to and, um, yeah, get something going. But I should definitely be continuing to use his pop-ups. I think I might need to um, secure a few more pots of them now. I actually saw a pot of them being sold on the internet for £20 the other day. I kid you not. They're that good. They really are. I did well on my vanilla spice pop-ups, I've got them with me. I haven't used them for a few weeks though, so I've just been using Jason's. Uh, he don't make them anymore. Crying. It's a crying. <laughs> Wind is pushing down nicely now, isn't it? Look at it, lovely. Just had a quick look, the other end is a flat calm now. So. A few hours late, but that's alright, I don't mind. It's perfect for the mid-morning, afternoon and evening session. So like I say, location isn't just about finding a carp, it's about finding areas where you think you can catch one. That's, that's the key. <laughs> I've been places on lakes, I've been in areas on lakes where there's lots of carp and I haven't caught. And I've been on areas where there's no carp really showing, and I've caught, like here this morning. And it's true to say that if you spot some carp, you will probably get in that area. But sometimes when there's a lot of them, it can be harder to catch them because they're all talking to each other and communicating. You know, so you make a mistake, and they all know real quickly. Whereas if there's just a few fish in your area and they're just coming through, then the likelihood of that happening is bias. You know, so you've got to be aware that they can do certain things and you've got to try and play a game where they can't do that, where they where 
that's less effective. I remember another time, I, I could give you so many examples. I remember another time I went onto the lake, put out the deeper to find some fish. Uh, it was late season, it was November, late November. So I knew that the fish would be all shoulder up and probably all together in one area. And so I, you, you've got to find them, and they weren't showing. And I needed to find out the topography of the areas as well, do a bit more of that. And eventually, of course, I came across the carp. And they were all stacked up in 16 foot of water. Well, it was about 20 foot deep, but they were about 4 feet off the bottom, up to about 10 feet deep. So, in 6 feet, there was about 30 carp, all, all showing in one area. There was some a bit higher, some a bit lower, but the majority in that area. And I fished it all day. I didn't catch anything. I didn't catch a single one. In fact, when I checked later, the carp was still there. I put the deeper out on the other bank, pulled it back over, and it was still there. And I wasn't catching. Uh, you put a lead in the water when there's carp around. One of them gets agitated. It just takes one. Things go erect. It swims away rapidly or in a worried manner, as whatever you want to call it. I'm sure you've seen it. The rest fire. So, yeah, anyway, that's my theory, <laughs> and what it is too. It's a lovely day. Another one out there. There's a lump as well. Really dolloped out. This camera's not so straight, is it? There you go. <sighs> Sun's out. Beating down on me. Still mustn't grumble, eh? <laughs> it's always good to see a fish roll like that. You know. I often wonder, you know, when they're doing a lot of rolling and leaping and jumping and what's actually going on down there, you know. Because more often than not when that's happening, I'm not catching fish. It's when the rolling stops that you tend to catch them. But the wind's been pushing down here nicely for the last hour or so. A couple of hours almost. Other end of the lake is completely flat calm. Ooh, there's a lump. That was a big one. That might have been the same fish as that one, but it's difficult to say. That was a big dark looking fish. There's some there's some lumps in here. There really is. I want to catch them all. This is why. One of the reasons why I want to catch more, I mean, there's a lot to get through. But I was talking to somebody, I think it was Tim, maybe, who was saying I think there was 140 carp in this lake, and it's five acres. But only 50 or 60 fish get caught regularly. So there's a lot of fish not getting caught. Um, I didn't hear another member saying that they, they put in some fish and they've never been caught. <laughs> it's like that, isn't it, with a lot of waters. You know. So they're the ones you want to catch, aren't they, as much as anything else. You know. If you can start catching the ones that don't get caught very often, then you know you're doing well. So far, far I've caught at least one fish. There's a rare visitor to the bank, and that's the ladder. Um, nice to catch more. So, yeah. But I'm having a good run of 20 pounders at the moment. I think the last three sessions I've had three. Maybe four. I don't know, three. I thought I'd look in my diary and check it out. Yeah. Well, we're swinging around again. It's all over the place.
Well, that's a lovely wind coming down the lake, isn't it? It's been blowing now for quite a while. It's supposed to be overcast, so could be all right for this evening. You know, this afternoon, this evening, we could be on for a fish. I'm hoping. Um, I'm complaining. I've been catching, I think, two fish most weeks um, between the two sessions that I'm doing. Some weeks I've had three, others I've had one other round, I think I had four. So it would be nice to get back to the four, you know. You know, got to crack on, you know. Want to catch them all. <laughs> right, well I've had dinner. Um, I've got some barbecue chicken drumsticks with me, four. They're quite big. Um, I've eaten two. I had one for brunch after my soup. Flask of soup for breakfast. It was nice. Some biscuits. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's inside a plastic box. Inside of this bag here, my little cool bag, my little food cool bag. I also use it for dead baits in the winter. <laughs> but um, that's what I got it for, actually. But um, I can smell it from here. I can smell that barbecue chicken from here. In a box, in a bag, still can smell it. I was like sitting here for an hour or so smelling it. Just getting my juices going. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can't get half an hour kit. That'd be nice. I forgot to say, I um, took the rods out about an hour ago. Went for a walk, checking all those areas where I'd seen those carp last week, clouding up the bottom. Looking for blood worm and uh, all the spots are gin clear, there's no carp on them, no clouding. You can see the areas that they're feeding on really clearly, really clearly. The running swim one is just at the entrance to the swim. It's a big old dish, it's probably a metre and a half, two metres across. They're feeding there regularly, I've seen them clouding up that before, so. Well, it's just gone three, a little while ago, I took the rods out. Recast them and bait it up. So we're all set. The pellets that I put in this morning and after I caught that fish will have been dissolved by now. There won't be much left. So while the water's warm like this, you have to keep your eye on your pellets. That's always a good idea to throw a few in the margin and keep an eye on them. And whatever happens to them. That's what's happening to your ones out there, um, but more so, especially if the rudder are on them. But generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, when the pellets are half dissolved, that's when I'm starting to think about, you know, bring it up again. Well, that's the good thing about the pellets. They don't get eaten, they stay around, but they're just mush, watery mush. They're sort of scenting the whole area. There's not a lot there for the carp, so you can bait straight over the top of it. Unlike boilies, which they're not eating. Yeah, a bit different. But they work differently anyway, so. Vlog time. Not long after I baited up either, so happy days. I've got the camera back a fair way for this one. <laughs> it's a real beauty. It's a beauty. I knew it was a big one. As soon as I hit into it, it just... It's got that solidness to it that's different, isn't it? Oh, blimey. There we go. Check it out. 37 pounds again. Clonker. <laughs> Absolute clonker. When I saw it in the water, I thought it might be one I caught before, but no. At 32, I thought it might be, but no. Too big. Oh, what a clonker. <sighs> Turn you around, you're being very good. You were. Put it on its belly. 
don't let it flap on its side too much. There you go. It's got a little bit. I'll tell you what, these bigger carp are a lot easier than these small ones, that's for sure. And they flip. Not so bad. Come on, mate. Be good. Oh, there you go. That feels heavy. I know I've got this in my hands. Right, a few quick picks. Pop it back. Good day. Cameras in the pocket, shouldn't take more than a minute. Oh, brilliant. Well, how about that then? That's a clonker, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I knew as soon as I picked up the rod, and I felt it, and it just went. I'll just loosen the clutch and let it run a little bit. Stopped it. Tighten the clutch. And just, you know, and it just thumped up and down. Went on some terrific good runs. I think that was margin here. But luckily, I kept it under control. When I reached down and took the hook out, it just came out like it wasn't even in. So, yeah. <laughs> Another 37 pound fish this time a mirror. Really chuffed, really chuffed. It's been a good day, isn't it? 25 pounder and a 37 pounder in a day. I'll take that any time. <laughs> Not too often, you get bored with me. It will be a special, I suppose, if I have to do it or something. Yeah. So that fish came long after the last blog entry, so about half past three, so we've still got another good three or three, four hours of daylight left, so there's every chance we could get another one. I'm done. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, but it would be nice to get another. I don't want to be greedy, though. Yeah, no. I'm going to catch them all, haven't I? There's a few like that in here. I've seen a number of them like that. That was a lovely fish though. The colours on it, browns. A huge, huge head. And a tiny little turtle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great fish though. A lot of fish. Happy days.